Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Evan, coach of the Santa Cruz Sand Shrews, and this is week 2 of our Literal Lessons Draft League. This week, I'm going up against Discord user DanChunks7 and the Romford Typhlosions. Uh, both of us won our week 1 match with 2-0 victories. So, since we are playing Swiss rounds, we will be naturally paired up with each other in week 2 this week. First of all, let's go through the usage stats of our mons from both our teams. Uh, notably, the third mon on Dan's side, the Glastria, is swapped into Reggie Lecky because he made the trade last week. So this week, I'll be going up against Reggie Lecky on his team. Um, overall, we can see that both of us tend to bring our hard hitters and a few support mons um, to help the team out. My hard hitters will be Sogalio and Cinderace, and his hard hitters are Necrozma and Glastria. <laughs> then both of us also bring our dark types, interestingly. I think it might be matchup specific. Umbreon on my side and Drapion on his side. I think Drapion is quite a bulky mon, especially in a draft league format, and it only has one weakness, and um, it has a good speed tier, and I think it hits very hard if it crits. So that's all for the usage stats. I will, you know, down the road, we will be able to see more usage stats as the numbers increase. Then we can see uh, how each person uses their mons. And that's very interesting, in my opinion. So next up, we have the predictions. Uh, and this is what I expect him to bring. No, I, I don't expect uh, Ultra Necrozma. But Ultra Necrozma is interesting because it has the psychic and dragon typing and spoiler alert i'm gonna bring my psychic dragon to the matchup uh, this is the correct slide so <laughs> it's just a necrozma uh, dusk main let's talk about my side uh, of the mons i feel like i should bring the mons i'm considering and those that are tough to bring necrozma uh no sogalio i mean uh yeah this will be the the what the showdown of the lions in this week. Uh, I'm bringing Sogalio because uh, of its ability and like he cannot lower my stats, he cannot lower my speed and if I boost up um, my attack special uh, my attack defense and special defense then uh, I think Sogalio will be quite hard to take down and um, it's very difficult to slow Sogalio down as well. <laughs> then I'm bringing Latios for this week because of the, the typing, like uh, the type matchup against his team in general, his team does not have a fairy type, um, his team also does not have a dragon type, so uh, Latios seems to be very strong here, and Latios has a very good uh, white, a very wide move pool that can hit a lot of his mons for super effective. Hopefully, I will be able to showcase that in the battle. Uh, Umbreon and Weezing are my go-to support mons. Umbreon naturally very bulky and with baby doll eyes and snarl will be able to slow down my opponent. Then Weezing, the only reason I'm bringing Weezing this week is very interesting because of its ability to shut down all other abilities. We can see a Colossal uh, on my opponent's side and Colossal is really a mon that needs its ability to get it going. Without its ability, it will always be slow. Uh, similarly, he has a Defiant and a competitive Mon. So, if I were to go for a Max Worm win and I put Weezing on the field, then I won't be able to proc their uh, abilities and give them boosts. So, the Mons that I'm considering are Luxray for the Intimidate. Because Necrozma uh, is susceptible to Intimidate. And if I were to cycle the Intimidate as well, then Necrozma won't be doing that much damage. Um, however, Luxray, you know, he only has the ground weakness, so I do have to be careful of that. <coughs> then, I'm also considering uh, Regigigas. But then, when I was testing uh, with my buddy, I, I really don't see how Regigigas can give value to this matchup. Um, you know, he has... Like, the Regigigas can hit his mons for super effective, but then... He has a few mons that can resist uh, Max Strike in Necrozma and uh, Colossal. 
and then he can easily switch in uh, the Cofrevigus to a max strike or even go for ally switch so and also if he goes for a will wisp on my Regigigas then there's you know it's very difficult to get Regigigas going or similarly if he takes down Weezing early or try to stop my setup then you know it's very difficult to make Regigigas work the last one I uh, would want to bring will be Gorgeist Gorgeist will be very important here because like uh, I need to find out where the focus sash and where the weakness policy is and Gorgeist with its freeze ability will help me very well. Also, Gorgeist has a lot of uh, very useful support moves like Will-O-Wisp uh, and also Trick Room and it will help my team very well and uh, there are ways for me to prop my own weakness policy as well. So, the mods that I feel are tough to bring uh, Cinderace, Butterfree and Hitmonlee because they are very uh, they are not the bulkiest their stats uh, their defense stats are quite low and then it's very difficult for them to go up against uh, Necrozma take Cinderace for example if Cinderace Dynamaxes and tries to do a lot of damage there is a high chance that the opponent can revenge kill Cinderace and then I won't be able to use the next two Dynamax turns well so that's why I'm benching Cinderace this week. Then for Butterfree, uh, I think he might be prepared for sleep, especially with Reggie Lecky. And for Hitmonlee, if I can get a fake out off, but then what at what cost? Because Hitmonlee might go down uh, very quickly. Let's move on to the mons that I expect to see from his side, from the Romford Typhlosions. Uh, very obviously, we have the lion in the room, not the elephant in the room, Necrozma, Dusk Main. Uh, it's picking up popularity in series 8 right now. Necrozma, Dusk Main is a beast. If your opponent does not have intimidate or ways to slow it down, it has a sky high special attack stat and it is so bulky and difficult to take down. If it keeps getting uh, stacking max steel spike and max quick boost, then it is so difficult to uh, remove, especially when it's Dynamax. Then uh, you can also expect a weakness policy on it, so you might not want to uh, hit a super effective move onto it because it will just fire back with a much stronger attack. Then Kofergigas is interesting. Uh, we rarely see Kofergigas at all, but in this matchup, I feel that Kofergigas is so useful for him because Kofergigas has a very high defense stat and it can go for body press that hits super effective on Umbreon and uh, my Regigigas. And if Necrozma stacks the max steel spike boost, it will boost up uh, Kofragigas' damage output. For Kofragigas, you don't even need to uh, invest in attack EVs at all. You just have to invest, invest in max HP and max defense. And the defense that helps it do the, uh, the damage for you. And that's quite amazing. Another thing that I found very frustrating to uh, go up against the Kofragigas is the ability. It's sort of like wheezing. As long as you hit it with a physical attack, then it, it takes away your ability. So taking away like full metal body on my Sogalio will be detrimental to me. Or even like levitate on my Latios. No, Latios is not hitting it physically. Or, or I'm talking about um, like Luxray or... Uh, Umbreon. I mean, it's quite annoying just to have the mummy ability. Then, um, Sneasel and Reggie Lecky are very, very good, uh, very good support mons on his side. Reggie Lecky can set the screens, and there is no way I can outspeed uh, Reggie Lecky. Then, Sneasel has very, very good uh, support options. Personally, I've used Sneasel to get to a uh, to second place in my. Uh, in one of our tournaments here in Singapore. It's, it's a small scale tournament, but I'm very proud that I was able to bring Sneasel this far. And that's because Sneasel has inner focus, you can't fake it out. And it has a lot of uh, ways to support the team very well, like Surf for the Colossal, um, Snarl, Icy Wind, even Ice Shard. So the mons that I feel are likely uh, for him to bring will be Colossal. Because uh, if you can get Colossal going, Colossal is a good check to Sogalio with its plus 2 uh, max flare. Then Drapion um, is 
the the hard hitting dark type on his side, and Drapion has a good speed tier. Uh, and if you give Drapion the scope lens, uh, it does a lot of damage through crits. And my hard hitters are Sogalio and Latios, so I really have to be careful if I see a Drapion. Now I'm gonna group uh, Bravery and Milotic together because they are there just to um, discourage me from bringing, bringing Intimidate. And Bravery has good um, Tailwind support and can uh, Dynamax, it's a very good Dynamax option. And it can always uh, gain speed control easily while doing damage with its max moves. Milotic might be tricky cause you know he might bring Hypnosis and just go for blind Hypnosis which will be very tough for me to handle. The mons that I feel are unlikely uh, for him to bring will be Zerkitri. It's interesting that um, by trading Glastria into Reggie Ileki, he has two electric types now. So, but then the Reggie Ileki is the more useful one because Zerkitri does not have very good uh, HP and defenses. All its, e all its uh, stats are put into the special attack stat. So it's very unlikely for me to see it. Then Uxi, I don't think Uxi can give much value in this battle. Um, like it's sure it's very bulky and you know it can set trick room, but then after that maybe it can't do much. It can only you know some people use it for an ally switch bot or um, yeah maybe just real waste. Yeah, so I'm not very sure. So let's move on to. The, my general predictions. So these are the sets that I'm expecting. It's very crucial for me this week to find out where the weakness policy is so that uh, I try my best not to activate it. So the first mon here is Necrozma Dusk. I'm expecting weakness policy or life orb just to do as much damage as possible and my notes at the side is extremely bulky. Very very bulky especially if it gets its boost up. The next one I'm expecting is Cofagrigus with Mental Herb because I have Torn or Cobra Berry because uh, the Regigigas is well known to have a very strong Max Darkness. Then its stats will be Max Defense for maximum body press damage. Then Regigilecki with the lights, Light Clay, I feel that that's the best item that he can bring with Regigilecki and good pivoting with Boat Switch. Sneasel with Eviolite or Sash. This, make, this means that uh, it requires me to use two turns to take down a Sneasel. I've, for me, I personally used uh, Eviolite Sneasel and it's actually quite bulky. It can survive uh, Charizard's Heat Wave in Sun, but that's when, you, when it's a spread move and when Charizard's not Dynamax. So um, I'll have to be very careful of that. And then Sneasel has. Surf, Icy Wind and Snarl that can really slow my team down uh, and then I cannot recover from it. Uh, Colossal might have the weakness policy or the life orb, same as Necrozma, I will have to check it out. And the Max Flare is very good against Sogaleo. Bravery, life orb or a resist berry, like the rock resist or electric resist berry. Bravery is so it's quite good. Uh, in a draft league format because it is very very it has very few weaknesses uh, for us to hit him super effectively and it's a very good dynamax candidate because it can always get that speed control uh, while doing damage with its spread with its dynamax moves then drapion is a, a wild card i'm expecting ban scarf or even scope lens it has a good typing because it has only one weakness like Alolan Mark back in the sun and moon days and it's relatively bulky. So that's all for the breakdown and now let me introduce my team that I'm bringing this week. So let's start with Sogaleo. Um, Sogaleo is holding the weakness policy same as last week but this week we are going uh, full physical because that's where it, uh, gets the most value out of its stat moves um, but with physical attacks. Um, close combat so that uh, if I get the chance I can boost up my attack stat and there's no way that he can lower it. Then it's going to be max attack and max HP. I feel that uh, I don't need the speed this week 
the only reason it's brave is because I, I didn't want to re-EV my I didn't want to mint my Sogaleo but it's naturally faster than a Necrozma so out of Trick Room I should be able to move first and in Trick Room I should be slower than a Bravery or and, and uh, especially the Reggie Lecky then uh, next up we have Gorgeist with the Focus Sash so that I can always uh, try to survive two turns then Gorgeist will be the one that helps me prop my weakness policy with Shadow Sneak then Willow Wisp, um, Gorgeist is naturally faster than Bravery so Willow Wisp can slow down Bravery and Necrozma Trick or Treat, uh, it's an interesting tech that I will review later and Trick Room, uh, so that if he goes fast then I can be the one who sets Trick Room Bra um, as you can see, uh, Gorgas has a very high defense stat, very similar to Kofagrigus on his side. So I'm going very a lot in defense, the speed is necessary, and then a lot in HP. Next one is Lux Ray. Uh, this is a bit cheeky, I'm giving it the Cell Battery. I can give it Sugar Berry, but I want to try things out. So the Cell Battery means that if Reggie Ilecki goes for Vote Switch and hits into Lux Ray, then Lux Ray will get an instant plus one in attack. Luxray is max HP and max attack and uh, minimum speed because uh, Luxray is naturally slower than Necrozma so Luxray and a few other mons in my team can uh, move first before Necrozma when, if he uh, so chooses to set up Trick Room The moves are Wild Charge to do the most damage Crunch uh, for Necrozma, especially for Necrozma and Vote Switch for good positioning and protect Next up, we have Weezing. I'm double checking here, it's Neutralizing Gas to shut down abilities. Uh, max HP and max defense just to take a, a hit from Necrozma and, and Barbiri Berry to, you know, to, to ensure that it, it survives even more. It doesn't have an attacking move, so I'll have to be careful. Uh, Memento is quite useful against um, the Necrozma. And fun fact, when Weezing is on the field, and if it, ne if it goes for Memento on Milotic or Bravery, uh, I will lower its stats and it won't proc the uh, Defiant or Competitive because I lower its stats before I die. Then Willow Wisps uh, just to help out to slow down the Necrozma and protect to make it last longer on the field. Latios is my one of my Dynamax candidates for this week. And it's full offense, it's just gonna try to take KOs after KOs if he doesn't Dynamax any more. Uh, max special attack and some speed. N Latios is naturally fast, so uh, I feel that I need more bulk this week than speed. And if he goes for Tailwind uh, or Icy Wind or Electro Web, he's gonna outspeed me anyway, so I feel that I really need that bulk. And it's uh, max special attack and modest with the Life Orb, just to do as much damage as possible. Here are its moves, uh, Draco Meteor to uh, lower the attack on the opponent's side, Shadow Ball is very useful to take down Kofarigus and it pairs well with my Trick or Treat. So if I Trick or Treat Necrozma, it will make it 4 times weak to uh, Ghost. And then the Max uh, Phantasm is useful because if Umbreon comes in in the back, uh, Umbreon's foul play will do more damage. Then Thunder is because uh, he has a Bravery and a Milotic. Surf, just for Colossal. It's only for Colossal. So hopefully I'll be able to pull it, pull it off and catch him by surprise. So next up, uh, the last member of my team is Umbreon. Um, I really love Umbreon in this uh, meta game. It, uh, its moveset is Foul Play, Baby Doe Eyes, Moonlight for recovery, and it can even recover more in Sun and Helping Hand just to do that extra damage like to help my mons do that extra damage if he chooses to KO the Umbreon then Umbreon is same as Weezing max HP and max defense just for uh, Necrozma then it's holding the Citrus Berry so that it can take a hit uh, recover back and then take two more hits yeah so that's my team for this week and I'll see you guys uh, in the battle which I'll be streaming. Alright, so let's hop into the battle. Good luck, have fun to Dan Chunks and the Romford Typhlosions. 
I feel like it's fun to introduce the uh, the team names. Okay, I expected. Yeah, I definitely expected the Cofragigas. It's the one that I'm most afraid of. And I didn't expect Zaki Tree. And it's smart of him to bring Sneasel Colossal. And uh, the Drapion is scary. Okay, I'm gonna try this out. Oh, he didn't bring his Intimidate and uh, Defiant. He didn't bring Milotic and um, Bravery. The Drapion is scary. The Drapion is very scary. We really need to slow the Drapion down. And also the, the Necosma, both of them. Good thing is he can only bring 4. So, and I really need to pay attention to Frisk. I hope I got the correct ability. Ah, uh, so nervous. Wow, what a leap. Come on, please freeze. Okay, the Drapion is Choice Scarf. That is good to know. Expert Belt and Choice Scarf. I didn't bring Umbreon. Okay, let's just see how things go. Will he max? Is the question. Choice Scarf is a very very good bring because it threatens both my hard hitters. Yeah, okay. We're gonna keep spamming knockoff. I missed the Willow Wisp. Okay. Dazzling Gleam, okay. So that's where his fiery, his fairy type coverage is. Yeah. Question is who's in the back? I don't think he's bringing Sneasel and Colossal, so it should be Cofragrigus and. Um, it should be Cofragrigus and Necrozma. So we Dynamax Sogalu. Man, he's finding out all my items. I might die to this though. Okay, okay. Yeah, he gets the beast boost. That's bad. And he gets to find out all my items, huh? Very good prep on his end. Man, I really needed the... The Intimidate though. And I didn't make sure that I'm faster than a, than a Zerky Tree, so just have to be very careful. Man, you hate to see it, I'm uh, missing a uh, Willow Wisp.
Okay, the good thing is knockoff activates my weakness policy. So it should be a reverse sweep. And I don't think Dazzling Gleam kills me. Uh but maybe plus one it does. Oh it's very good to know that I'm faster than the Zerky Tree though. Nice. This means game 2 I can lead differently. No, I can lead the same for game 2. Meh, I don't I don't get to find out his other items. Um, I'm expecting Kofagrigus and Necrozma. In which case... Ah, nice. Sneasel. Okay, very strange. Alright. Um... Okay. Well, he's gonna max the Necros now, and that's very, very scary. And let's hope he targets the Latios, because it's the easy target. And let's see who's faster, because my Sogalio is very slow. If he protects the Colossal, then that's a very good move. Because I don't want to proc a weakness policy here. Double protect. Okay. It's gonna be the Alliance Showdown again. Uh, here it goes. Where's the weakness policy is the question. Let me just quickly write down his moves. Oh very good prep with the Zerky Tree because like there's he has no Dragon Mon and he has no Fairy Mon and that's where his fairy move is. I'm gonna go for the the thunder and hope for a paralysis. Yeah, I just need to connect and paralyze. Yes, you my your wish is my command. Says Latios. Okay, and I know this kills because um it does one quarter to protect. Okay, now I'm boosted up. I'm I'm ready for this uh Colo this Necrozma, and he needs to remove both my mons, right? So he needs to spend two more max turns to kill. Yeah, going for the skill spike is correct. Oh, so strong. Oh, it crit. Uh, it didn't matter because I didn't, I didn't uh, count to survive it. Okay, it's life up. Thank you. Okay, he wasted one turn max, uh, max guarding. So this turn he's gonna attack. He's life orb. Can I survive a max quick? I can't take that risk. So we just need the my earthquake to kill him. Nice, nice, nice. It's good to know his life orb. It's good to know his life orb. It's not weakness policy. Yeah, fine. Quick me, quick me. Come here, come. Oh, I will survive that quick. Cause uh, if you if you multiply by four that damage, man, my my logo is hiding his HP bar. Okay, okay, okay. This is looking good. This is looking good. I I think I can survive uh, an earthquake. I mean, this is do or die. So yeah, this is the moment of truth. And he's very bulky. I know that Necrozma is very bulky. He's at plus one. Yeah, uh, I, sh I should have attacked there. 
Okay, cause I'm at plus 3 defense. Nice, what a turn of events. So I'm at plus 2 defense, so it's good to know. Um, Earthquake is 100 base power. What a close match, it's li literally the battle of lions. I didn't take note of the, the damage there, it looks like 40%, so that's good to know. At plus 2 defense, I survived an earthquake from max attack Necrozma at 40%. Yeah, Whew. what a close match. Ah, So nerve wracking, it's crazy. I really think that Necrozma is just that little bit better than Sogaleo if you Make your if you build a team right. So yeah, that's why I'm so nervous going into this. What a crazy match! Okay, I can't take this anymore. See, I, I the thing is, I showed him that I'm we I'm willing to bring my my wheezing. Hmm. The thing is, I, I'm, it's still game 2 and I feel that I have the ability to lead the same. Or oh, do I need go guys in the first place? I don't need go guys anymore. Yeah, I don't need go guys anymore. He doesn't have... Um, he doesn't have... Defiant or competitive, so I can lead Luxury. Oh, I just realized that we are using Battle Tower rules. I'm wondering why is, why is my Weezing still smoky? I didn't expect that. Uh, but uh, I should have. I, I didn't uh, give nicknames because I didn't have time. Like, I, I know I can give nicknames to Latios, Luxury. God, guys, I cannot. Umbreon, I can. Uh, what a waste. Uh, we only have Smokey here, helping to save the day. Uh, I expect the weakness policy to be on Colossal. I expect the Sash to be on Sneasel. So even if he leads with Kofarigus, I, I double into it because... Because... Then that just eliminates like... Like if it just so happens to be Sash. Okay, this can go either way. It's really a very even matchup. He should lead differently, right? Yes, here we go. Sneasel and Colossal. I know that Japanese name. Okay, get ready. Get ready for this. If you um, if you are here on YouTube and you watch my uh, if you watch my team breakdown, then this is where it comes to. This is always the play. And there's no switching to this. This is always the play. Thing is, he didn't even know what my... Uh, he didn't know much of my Latio set. He only saw Thunder and Draco Meteor. So the other two moves are a very big question mark for him. Yeah, but this should be the play because even though my Latios doesn't have any speed EVs, it will always outspeed uh, Colossal. And I also built the Latios to outspeed a max speed Colossal even if the Sneasel goes for IC Wing. Yeah, okay, I, well, I want to see a Dynamax Colossal here. That's all, I just need to see the Dynamax Colossal. This is the fun of Draft League, I guess. Like, it comes down to the prep and how aware are you of what the opponent can do? Yeah, because the wheezing just shuts off steam engine. So I'm hoping to see a surf. Cause I actually I don't need that additional damage, but it's nice to see. Majestic Colossal. It won two players cups. Nice. Let's go. Yes, bring it home, Latios, bring it home. Okay, the weakness policy is there, it's confirmed. It's very, very good to know that the Necrozma was life off. Here we go. 
Let's go! Come on, Latios, bring it home! Nice. Pop. Okay, kill the coffin memes from very long ago. We can make this into a meme, right? Somebody can click this. Now, now I review on live for. I think the Scarf Drapion is coming. And I don't have Max Guard. That's the Drapion. That's the Drapion. No, oh, that's the. He didn't bring Drapion. Necrozma is in the back. Sneasel definitely has the move to, to hit me. So I think I'll intimidate it more. And then I will take the kill on the um, Zerky Tree because we confirmed that I'm faster than the Zerky Tree in the previous game. Shiny Luxury, thanks to Hakim. Thanks to Kim Nice. Oh, it's not lower. Okay, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. Yeah. His, his triple exo is gonna hurt. Okay, 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 okay. Good to know. Six tears. And this is my only stat move. Yeah, Draco Meteor killed it in the previous game, so this should kill. And I actually get to lower Sneasel's attack, so that if he just so happens to go for Triple Axel, then he won't do as much. Yeah, here comes the Cosma. Um, I get to find out where the Sash is, and I need to get out of here. So I just have to hope that he doesn't go for Icy Wing. Yeah. I'm like how um Bower Dead, Bower Dead if you're here, you use your your special mon like a Ferraton. I'm using my Latios like a Dragapult. Yeah, this is my Dragapult. Cool! That's good prep. Yeah. Wait, why reflect though? Oh, I think that's evil light. Yeah, that should be evil light. Am I faster than uh, Necrozma? No, I'm slower than Necrozma. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know, I know Luxury is slower because if he sets up Trick Room, then uh, my Luxury can crunch before Necrozma goes. Okay, so now all we do is spam Intimidate because that's the um, the best way to slow down a Necrozma. Good tip for you guys playing in Series 8. Yeah, you just spam Intimidate. So like like a Dragapult, my, my Latios was able to like just keep going for Max Worm Wind. Yeah, so now it's a minus one attack. Then yeah. I, I just love this Latio set, it's just like a dragon pot. Alright, just gonna keep spamming into it. Uh I'll Shadow Ball because I know that he is not weakness policy. Yeah, it's like special dragon pot. Huh? <laughs> Draco Meteor, Shadow Ball, uh then electric to stop sleep and so oh I, sh I can thunder my own luxury for the last one wow wow okay that's really strong nice predict yeah, because he knows luxury is coming and also it does super effective to the that's super effective to the wheezing. Just to make it a 4 I mean, this is a bit disrespectful, but I think we take those. Yeah, this is something that, like, if you have two modes in your team, then uh, in a best of three, it really works very well. Yeah, GG's to then.
Man, that's a bit, it's a bit cheesy, like, catching him off guard with a move that he does not know. But, uh, that, that shows how important uh, conserving information is in a uh, best of three. Alright, so that was the match. Now I'll do a bit of evaluation and conclusion on what went down just now. I felt that Dan did some good prep against my team, recognising the threats of my hard hitters in Sogalio and Latios. And in hindsight, I believe he prepared for Cinderace and Regigigas as well. I think that Scarf, Drapion is a very important mon on his part. And I think Drapion would be the mon that packs all the super effective moves against my hard hitters. Probably prepare a fighting move for Regigigas and maybe a ground move for Cinderace. And with the Scarf, he's able to outspeed everything. The Dazzling Gleam on Zerkitri is something that I did not expect as well. And Zerkitri has so much uh, special attack that it's essentially a stab move coming out from Zerkitri with that Dazzling Gleam. Then the turning point in game 1 was that he knocked off into my Sogaleo. And I think he might not have known that interaction that knock off procs your weakness policy instead of knocking it off. And from then, Sogaleo was able to boost up and do a lot of damage and uh, Incidentally, the mons that he brought in the back were slower than Sogaleo, so it was difficult to uh, to recover from there. But I felt that uh, looking back in game 1, things might have went awfully wrong if that Necrozma were to creep me at any time. So I felt that I stand by my play of going for Max Steel Spike instead of the obvious super effective Max Quake to boost my defense because I know that Sogaleo is the piece that I needed all the way to the end. So that was game 1. In game 2, I think Dan might have overlooked the fact that Weezing is so important to me. The I intentionally brought Weezing in game 1 to show that I really need that Weezing to shut off abilities and Colossal really needs his ability to get it going. So I would say that Weezing single-handedly helped me win game 2. There are some things that we can learn from this and translate it to the real-life VGC or um, official VGC events in, yeah, in two ways. The first way is that I feel that you need to adapt to all sorts of surprises or hidden texts and if you know your team well and have good resources and tools, uh, in a best of three, you should be able to uh, counteract these random weakness policies or random choice scarves. Then uh, the second point that I think we can learn is that uh, it's very important to conserve information. So he, I, my Latios only went for a dragon move and an electric move in game 1. So I don't think he expected that water move in game 2. Then uh, going down the road, if real life events come back, I feel that most events will go back to closed team sheets. So preserving information is uh, very important. It might bring you all the way to uh, the finals or you know you can do well in your top card games. So like if you are in game one and in you are if you are in a winning position, then don't review any other move. Just go for the uh, more the moves that you already clicked and uh, if you can win the game that way. So that's all for this week. That was quite a nerve-wracking match for me. And now the Santa Cruz Sand Shoes are 2 and 0. We designed the draft league so that if you win two matches, you are almost guaranteed to be in top cut. So for me, my next two matches will be for seeding and I will try my best to win them all. So thank you for sticking with me all the way till the end. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!